Good morning. Oh, one moment. Too many things to, uh, to remember here. Okay. Good morning. So on a, after a prior video, I was asked to share the, some of the Docker commands that I use to work with business central containers. And I was planning on doing that at some point, um, but since I was asked, I thought I'd move that up. And let's just jump into it. Um, so just to recap, uh, if you're familiar with Business Central, you probably heard that you can use Docker to download and work with Business Central containers and images, base images. And so in order to do that, you need to have some familiarity with PowerShell uh, because that's where the commands are issued. And then you'll need to learn some basic commands. And I knew nothing about PowerShell. I was familiar with it, but had never used it. And I knew nothing, absolutely nothing about Docker. And uh, it's been a very long journey, but I finally have Docker working on two different machines and it's pretty stable, works well. And I've slowly just Googled the commands for Docker to figure out what I needed to use in order to manage my environment. So it's not difficult, but it's like learning another language with its cryptic little quirks and figuring out what commands you need to use. Um, so with that, let me move over to my monitor here. Okay. Let me just verify all the streams are working. Okay, looks like they are. And, okay, so this is my Docker VM. So in this case, this is a virtual machine that it's a, I think it's a Windows Server 2019. Come on. Yeah, Windows Server 2019, um, version 18.09. And back in the day, this was pretty important because older versions of Windows didn't have the uh, Hyper-V or whatever infrastructure components were necessary to run Docker smoothly with Windows. So this is Windows Server 18.09 or higher or Windows 10, 1809 or higher. So you can run this on Windows 10. You just need to have 1809 or higher, essentially the latest version of Windows in order for things to work smoothly. Prior to that, 
you could be spending a whole lot of time and have a whole lot of headaches based on my limited experience. So in this case, this is actually a VM running on a Hyper-V server. Now, I previously tried running Docker on older hardware, older versions of Windows. It just wasn't pretty. I also tried it on my laptop. It technically worked, but just consumed all of my RAM and made my laptop unusable. So I have a dedicated physical server to run Docker. After I figured out how to do that and that ran well, I was able to just cautiously set up a new VM and run Docker. And that's what I've been using most of the time. It's just more convenient to have that VM rather than um, firing up the physical server and having that extra machine running. So this is just a VM and I don't know how much RAM I have assigned to this, but um, yeah, it looks like 12 gigs, something like that is available, nine is used. So you'll want a fair amount of memory, um, ideally at least 16 gigs to play around with this. Um, probably run it with less, but um, as you can see, it's, it's using a healthy amount of RAM. So with that, I have some Docker commands, which I will post somewhere. I'll probably create a blog post that uh, shares this file and lists them. There's nothing particularly valuable to this file other than everything is just collected in one place for you. But I'll just try to quickly run down some of the commands. So once I'm in my server, I use either the standard PowerShell window, or if I have a script that I wanna run with multiple lines like nav container helper or something like that, I will use PowerShell ISE. And so here I can op open like create a BC sandbox and it just has all the commands in one place. But um, since I'm working with just the individual Docker commands here, I'll just use the standard PowerShell window. So the first thing I wanted to know was, okay, how do I see what containers I have running on my system? And that's pretty simple. Docker PS. And you'll notice there are some like Unix or Linux throwbacks and references here. But um, so Docker PS will show you a list of PowerShell, or excuse me, of your Docker containers that are running. Now, if you have your typically sized PowerShell window, it'll look like this and it wraps and it's a little hard to read. So you can make it wider and everything is on one line. It's a really long line, but here I can see my container ID and I go across and I see that it is up two days and healthy and the name is test. Great. So this is your name. Ooh, I just lost power. <laughs> during a live stream. Okay, cool. So we'll see how long this lasts. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Okay. So credit to my uh, $2,000 worth of APC UPS units in the corner that are running everything. I think we stayed live. Let's see. Um, let me switch back to some video here, see if the stream's cut out. Yay! Okay, amazing. Live streaming through a power outage, very cool. Okay, so I'm going to now switch back. Um, where was I? Ah, <laughs> oh, let me get some coffee. One second. Uh, it is early for me. So this morning, um, I am drinking Stumptown, and this was actually um, recommended as a possible option by a friend, but then Shannon Mullins, a newly minted Business Central MVP, BizApps MVP, she also endorsed Stumptown. So I have tried like four or five of their blends, and they've all been good. Um, some are darker, some are lighter, more um, brighter, but this is kind of, I think this is one of their staples, Hairbender, and it is a, I'd say it's a slightly darker, um, stronger uh, flavor, 
but it's very good. I, I've liked all of theirs. Um, if you're into coffee, I think it's worth a try. And what's nice is it's available from my local um, Sprouts grocery store. So I'm able to just pick it up there and don't have to order it online. Anyway, with the power outage and coffee episode <laughs> behind us. Okay, anyway, so this is your BC container name. And I thought, oh, well, that's how I work with the BC containers. I'll reference this when I want to perform some command. Sometimes that's the case. Um, sometimes it is not. And I found in most cases, I end up using the container ID. And I don't know if it's standard to have this container ID as um, this, what I think it looks like a hex value. But um, I've seen other examples where it looks like they're referencing a human readable container ID or container name. I wasn't able to get some of those commands to work. So now I've just um, kind of given up and I pretty much always reference this value as the container ID when I'm working with Business Central containers. So with that, uh, that was Docker PS. Now let's stop. I'm going to jump ahead of myself and I'm going to stop one of these containers and I think that'll demonstrate my point. So Docker stop and then the container ID. And so here I currently have one, two, three, four, five containers. Um, four of those look like Business Central is my guess and one of those is Portainer which is a, a different Docker package. Okay, so my test Business Central container is now stopped. So now I'm going to run Docker PS and I just hit the up arrow on my keyboard so you can go back through commands just like DOS. So now I do a Docker PS and well, wait a minute, what happened to my test container? Well, because it stopped, it doesn't show up under Docker PS anymore. So I had to figure out, well, where's my container? Well, it turns out you have to use Docker PS-A to show all containers, even if they're not running. And there we go. There's my test container back. It exited 51 seconds ago, and we're all good. So you can see it. Uh, the non-running containers with Docker PSA. And then we'll go back to Docker stop. We'll just change that to Docker start. So you're learning about stop and start here, container ID. So Docker start or stop and press enter. And this does take a few seconds. I just, in my mind, I'm, I know the infrastructure is different, but I think of Docker like VMs. I mean, for all intents and purposes, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a VM but it's called a container and those containers are based off of images. So, um, so now that I have restarted that, I can do just a standard Docker PS and there test is back. It's up 23 seconds and health is starting. Now there was an issue, I believe with Docker and Windows. It didn't have to do with BC, but what would happen was after a few days or weeks or if you tried to stop and restart a BC Docker container, it wouldn't start up. And I forget the error status, but um, it said, you know, fault or something like that. And Freddie looked into it and I think the issue was some new change in either Docker or Windows. And um, there, they had to issue a fix. I think the fix came out in a Windows update, but um, I fortunately have not had an issue. I did encounter that issue. I haven't had that issue since. So whatever the issue was, I haven't can encountered it. But let's try Docker PS again. Let's see what the status is. Health starting. So it's taking a while. Now, while we're waiting for that, let me see if the Docker image is accessible. So I'm going to launch the Business Central client for that Docker image, and it's just test slash BC. While that is launching, let me just check on things. Okay. And if you have any questions while I'm doing this, you can reply or, or send a message in Periscope, on YouTube, or on Twitch. This is simultaneously streaming to all three platforms. So 
if you submit a message on any one of those three platforms, I should see it in my little restream chat window and I should be able to reply. So, okay, so it's not available yet. Let's see if it's still starting up. <coughs> okay, so here's a good example, unhealthy. I'm gonna have to go look that up. I don't remember what that means. I don't know if this is the, the bug or the issue that Docker had with Windows, but um, let's try one more time. And if I recall correctly, there was a manual workaround to try to get these unhealthy Docker images to start successfully. Um, it sounded a bit involved. I never tried it. Um, I think Freddie has a post on it or uh, one of the other, um, one of the BCMVPs figured out how to do it. I just kind of gave up. I deleted the Docker image and just recreated it. It's just less hassle. But if you stop and restart it, you may encounter the issue again. If you reboot your machine, that causes a restart, you may encounter it again. So I guess it's kind of good. So I may do a, I hate to do a video on that because hopefully it's temporary and it gets fixed. So this is actually good. So we have an unhealthy container. So let's jump into my Docker commands and see what we can do about that. So Docker RM, this is removing a Docker image or a Docker container, excuse me. So let's do another Docker PS, see what the status is. Well, it's still unhealthy, so I'm just gonna delete this guy. It's not worth fighting over. So I'm gonna copy this, and I'm going to type Docker RM space container name, and I'm gonna hit enter. So what do I get? I get an error. You cannot remove a running container, whatever this is, stop the container before attempting removal. So Generally, when you're deleting a container or an image, you need to make sure it's not running or there are no dependencies. Um, so what I'm going to do is do that Docker stop. Okay, and that's taking a little while, but it stopped. And now let's try our Docker RM and it complied. So now I do a Docker PS, I don't see test, but now we also want to do a Docker PSA. So great, even with Docker PSA, because we know it stopped, it's not showing up at all. So that Docker container has been removed. So now sometimes maybe you want to stop all of your running containers. Now I, given what we just saw where I couldn't restart the container, um, I'm not going to run this now because I may kill all of my containers, but this is a script that will stop everything. So it runs the docker stop command, and then it looks like a, um, I don't know what you call this in uh, PowerShell terms, but it's like a uh, recursion or a subquery of sorts in SQL terms. So it's running docker psaq. I, I don't know what the Q is, but grabs your list of docker containers and then sends them all to the docker stop command to stop all of those. So that's how you'd stop everything. Now, a Docker container is in, I think of it as an instance, and that instance is based off of an image. So the image is like a template. And so, great, so I have my running Docker containers, but I see that the image is like MCR, Microsoft, Business Central, Sandbox, LTSC 2019. Hmm. Well, where do I see my images? So what we can do is Docker images. And this is kind of like the image version of Docker PS. So here I see that's a generic image that I used with the new um, artifact feature that was created six days ago. And then there's my US LTSC 2019. And then I believe this none that indicates a, a um, orphaned or deprecated image that has been replaced as part of the latest cycle of nav container helper. I don't quite understand the mechanics of that, but when this tag is none, basically it's orphaned and you can get rid of it. And then there's the tag of latest, uh, that's portainer. So that makes sense. Okay, 
So let's get rid of this none because that should be orphan. So I use my image IG ID just like I worked with my container ID. And oh, the other thing is maybe I have an image that isn't in use. Let's take a look. So here I have four images. So let me do Docker images A, just like Docker PS A. Nope, still only have four images. Um, so now let me do Docker RMI and I'm going to get rid of this image because it is none. Unable to delete images being used by running container 7BA and 7BA is this one and it looks like it is also used by AL, so AL dev one and two. Um, bummer. Well, let's just go for it. So I'm going to stop. The term, oh, docker stop. It's early. Okay, so I'm stopping my 7BA container. And let's just clean this up again. So now we have docker PSA. And I see that my 7BA container is now exited. And now I'm going to do docker images. Let me just scoot this over. And now I see my none. Grab that. And I'm going to do docker rmi to remove my image. There's my image ID. Unable to delete images being used by 7D. Not surprising. So let's do a docker stop. Stop that second container. Okay. So now I can try to remove the BE image. What? Oh, uh, okay. So even though I stopped, it's been a while since I've done this. So even though I stopped these, they still exist. And so stopping them, it says image is being used by stopped container. So I thought because it said running container, I can stop them. Well, it's still using the base image, even though it stops. So let's do Docker. PSA and Docker RM. Let's get rid of this guy. Okay. And then let's get rid of 7D. Oops. Okay. So now we can see we only have two containers. One is based off US LTSC 29, 2019, that's three weeks old, so it's relatively current, and that's called Sandbox. Then I have Portainer, and then we have Docker Images, and there's our none. So let's do Docker RMI, and there we go. The matrix reveals itself. And now my none tag is gone. One more thing. Um, I previously mentioned that I wasn't able to find a good way, or I haven't yet figured out or bothered to figure to find a way to use the container names um, in Docker commands, and I've just given up and just use a container ID. Well, I've also seen some references that you can apparently use the Docker image tag in order to manage your images. And I think I tried it or looked into it, but basically I just go back to the ID. It's not as readable, but in the case of these image IDs, I know they're unique and they're just much easier to work with. So there is that. Okay, so we've covered Docker PS, start and stop, RM to remove containers. So these are all container commands. You can stop all running containers. And then we have our images, or image commands, Docker images, 
or images slash dash a, rmi to remove an image based on the ID. And this might be what I was referring to, repository colon tag. Um, so you could reference the repository name and the tag name in order in lieu of an ID. But if I'm going to that much trouble, it's like, whatever. With these repository names and tag names, it's just easier for me to reference the image ID. I've seen examples in other environments where they have much, you know, uh, I guess more typical corporate Docker environments. They have much simpler repository and tag names, and it might make sense to do that. But in the BC Docker container world, I think the image ID and the um, container ID, it's just simple to deal with. It's short, easy to copy. Okay, so those are the base Docker commands that I've used. And then we move on to nav container helper. Now, one thing um, you'll learn quickly <laughs> is that sometimes you'll be running an old version of nav container helper and it's not working the way you want. There's something that's acting strange and it is because you are intentionally or unintentionally or unknowingly using an old version of nav container helper. And this has happened to me at least twice now. And one quirk of PowerShell is if you keep refreshing or downloading the latest version of a module, it will retain all the prior versions and you will not realize it. So down here, you could have multiple versions of nav container helper. And I think in my prior video, I showed that um, I had 0700 and the latest version is 0709. Even after I installed 0709, the original 0700 was retained. What will happen is you can issue a PowerShell command and PowerShell will arbitrarily choose which version of a module to use. And I, I read an article on it, but it was very strange in terms of how it decided which version to use. So I was running a PowerShell script for nav container helper. It was hitting the old version and the results were very strange. It was an error message that didn't make any sense. And turns out that I had to delete those older versions. You can probably reference and, and specify which version of a module you want to use, but I don't need those older versions. I don't care. So I just had to delete them. So this is what you can use to, um, this is one way to update nav container helper, install and import. There is also an update command, but um, I don't think I've used it and um, a post on Twitter, uh, I think by Daniel, um, indicated that when he used it, he it, it w didn't work. So it didn't update the existing version and like replace the old version. He still has to remove it. So I believe this is the script that he shared on Twitter. Remove old versions of nav container helper. So module name, nav container helper, latest um, get installed module, module name, and then you can uninstall the older modules. So let me just see what's on my calendar this morning that I'm not missing anything. One moment. Good morning, Christoph. Okay. And Let's see. Okay, looks like I have, I'm good until 9.30 or 10. Okay, so back to Docker. So you want to check to make sure that you have the latest version of Nav Container Helper, and you will want to remove old versions. Um, so you'll go in here, check, and you'll clean them out. You can make this part of your regular scripts when you're using it, but just be aware that that will bite you and you will spend many minutes scratching your head trying to figure out what's going on. Um, ah, so we just went through the process of cleaning up a, a few of my kind of orphaned containers and images and that was a pretty involved process. So um, this was also shared on Twitter 
And I believe, um, gosh, I can't remember who shared this, but uh, he has a blog post on this, that this is a command you can use to clean up those orphaned containers and images, um, or at least the images. I think you need to probably manually clean up the containers before you run this, but let's just run this. So I, instead of running all those manual commands to clean up my images, I could have run this, and this is like a, uh, oops, there we go, Docker images dangling true, Docker RMI. Oh, yeah, remove images, there we go. Okay, so that command does the same thing. Um, it ran very quickly because I didn't have anything to clean up, but that's another variant rather than doing them manually. So then we get into the BC Sandbox stuff and that is kind of its whole, a whole other discussion and episode. And um, I'll want to do something separate for that. So those are the basic commands that I use when managing Docker containers. And there, I'm sure there are a lot more um, that can be used. Those are just the ones I've used regularly so far. And since I saw Portainer in there, I have not used this much, but in theory, this would be a very helpful thing for me to use. And let me see if I remember my password. So Portainer, I believe, is like a dashboard. So rather than doing everything via PowerShell, let me see if I can find my Portainer. Docker Portainer. Okay. Okay. So this is a nice graphical user interface for managing your containers. And this itself is just a Docker image and Docker container. So it's kind of like Inception. So we have a Docker container called Portainer that allows you to manage your containers. And so there is, uh, and you can, uh, I take that back, you can do much more than manage your containers. So I believe this is a, gosh, it's been so long since I set this up. I haven't really spent much time in here, but we have an endpoint. Yeah, I'm not really using it. I think I looked into this to see if I could better manage the network that Docker used, but obviously I have not used it. So this is my endpoint. I have three images, and that's the same thing I saw in PowerShell. So there's my US LTSC 2019, and there is the generic image based on the artifact container, and there is Portainer. And I can drill into this, tells me the size. It's kind of cool. It's more info than I've previously received. And there's a lot going on there. Okay. That's my images. I have two networks, and I think that's what I was playing with. I was trying to do, or looking into doing the NAT network to make them accessible outside of this VM. And I know there's a way to do it, I just haven't figured out how to do it. And here are my containers, and they're both healthy and running. So this might be a place to try and deal with those unhealthy um, containers. Maybe I can try a stop and restart here. Uh, rather than delete them. Um, I'll have to look into that. So there's an entire universe of Docker. I haven't even scratched the surface. I'm very much a novice. But that is a list of some of the just basic commands that I, as a clueless person, have figured out that I need to use on a regular basis. I do not remember these. I just don't use them frequently enough. So this is actually copied from a OneNote page that I maintain and I've just copied it to the server for convenience here. So if you know Docker PS, start and stop, RM, and your Docker image commands, that's half the battle. And then from there, you can do the more specific things that you need to do for your uh, particular use case. So with that, 
I am going to wrap this up and feel free to ask me questions on Twitter. Um, let's see, where is that? So um, I'm on Twitter at Steve Endo. Uh, these videos are on Periscope, uh, which is convenient for mobile, but if you're on a desktop or laptop, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel or Twitch. Uh, the full videos are on YouTube at youtube.com slash Steve Endo and also twitch.tv slash Steve Endo. Um, but with that, have a good day and enjoy. Good morning, life. Good morning, sun. How are you? Skies above. Gee, it's great to be alive and love. Good, good morning, sun. Good morning, sun. Good morning.